I've been making steady progress on the goat man, and today I want to show you more in depth the base of the head and the neck structure that I've created to support it. Hi, I'm Kazool and welcome to my lair. This week I want to give you an update on the Goat Man. Now BlizzCon is just around the corner, so I may not get all my in-depth videos covering the build done before BlizzCon, but I am doing my best to capture as much as the process as possible. If you want to be more up to date and follow right along with my build, go follow and subscribe to my Twitch. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday and have been showing a lot of my progress there. Uh, speaking of Twitch, I was planning on entering the TwitchCon cosplay contest, but I, I missed the deadline, wasn't as far as I want, wasn't quite as prepared as I needed to be, so I did not enter in this year, but I do plan to do it for next year and be more prepared, so stay tuned to that. I'll figure out some cool project for that next year. Let's start by taking a closer look at the head. You remember that sculpt I did and showed off in my first video? I took that and simplified down half of the face so that I could take a pattern from it and blow it up. You can see this is the first head that I created. It's completely hollow out of EVA foam, just a six millimeter EVA foam. I decided that this head was too small, but it did show me that the pattern worked, so I went and blew it up by 100% more. So this was at 400% and this was at 500%. So this is just a base and I will build upon it and add detail to it. This is exactly how I did Hogger's head and I'm excited to detail it and make it look more like a goat as I go along. Now the horns I did the same way. I sculpted the horns out of clay and took a tiny tape pattern of them and used my overhead projector to blow up the pattern. I taped together those pieces of paper to see if the size was right. I ended up making about three paper patterns before I was happy with the size and shape. So you can see here the horns are, they, they, I actually decided to make them out of half inch L300 foam because it's very lightweight. I did the half inch so that I could dremel in the details, um, but it's, it's hollow construction, so they're hollow inside, very lightweight. Each horn weighs uh, just a half pound and I have two very strong magnets to hold it in place on the head. You can see that I already have been texturing them. I will go more into detail on how I textured and made the horns in a separate video. The next part I built is I fashioned a warbler helmet to fit my husband. You can see this bust I made, it's exactly his dimensions, just expanding foam covered in Bondo. So I, I made this little warbler helmet and glued the head to it. Now at first I was planning to have a little pivot so that the head could rotate. I knew with the neck structure, the rotation of the head would be limited, and I wanted to give it a little bit more character by allowing the, the nose to tilt up and rotate in the head. You can see that here in this video. But once I got the horns done and attached to the head, that pivot was way too unstable. Uh, the, the balance in the head was way off since the horns made the head back heavy. It would flip the nose up very often. So I decided to nix that feature as it was just a tiny point balancing the entire head. Um, it was a potential point of failure and, and I decided it wasn't, it didn't add enough to the costume for me to try to keep it. 
So now I want to show you how I designed the neck to support this head. Right now this head is about two pounds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it will get heavier as I go. And as you saw in the first clip, you can see that the head is completely suspended by this structure. Let me show that to you now. Here's the neck structure. Um, and you can see that it's being completely supported by the structure. Um, there, there is no head on this mannequin, so it's completely being supported by the chest. So what I did was I sewed together this body harness out of nylon webbing, and I sewed these channels that hold Delrin rod. So it's, it's just pieces of very thin, I think quarter inch Delrin rod. You can see they're pretty flexible, um, but, they're, but they can hold a surprising amount of weight. All I did was sew like a long channel of nylon webbing that these would stick into. So if there is any movement like this, they have like a long way to travel and won't pull out. On the top part, what I did is I just lumped a chunk of warbla and stuck the Delrin rod up into it to create another channel. I later drilled a hole through the warbla and through the Delrin rod and the, with the intention of adding a cotter pin-like device to hold, make sure that those hold on this end and don't pop out. Now you may be wondering why the head is angled like this. It's like the goat man is looking into the sky. That came about from this test fit video. You can see I told my husband to act like he would want to in the finished costume. And you can see he does a lot of crouching. He doesn't have a lot of ability. He doesn't have any ability really to rotate the head backwards or forwards or leaning over his shoulders. All he has is a, I guess it would be a Z rotation axis turning from side to side. He can't move his head any other way. So as he was crouching around performing, I noticed that the goat man was looking straight at the ground and that didn't really look intimidating to me. So I decided to take the head and angle it up. So when he was down performing, the, the goat man will be looking out at the crowd and being intimidating. So I asked my husband after I had him try this structure on, like if it was comfortable or if most of the weight was off his head um, and if, if he thinks he could wear it a long time. And he said that what he liked about this structure most is that it stabilized the head. Um, it's it's so top heavy that before it would like swing his head around and, and like turning it took great effort and would put a lot of strain on his neck. This, with this structure, it stabilizes the head so that it, it doesn't hurt in any way. And it is holding a significant amount, if not all the weight from his head. So. Uh, overall, like I did a ton of drawings of this. I tried really hard to make it so that I could get another rotation axis in. So um, like especially uh, rotating his head like this. See, he can rotate his head in the Z axis, um, but rotating his head from side to side in I guess would be the X and the Y going forward. Um, it just wasn't possible. Um, the, these are the types of compromises you have to make sometimes in costumes because it's it's like do, do you want the support and the structure or you'd want the movement and in this case I opted for a l more structure just because this head is so large I really didn't want my husband to get hurt. But you can see by this video I think there still is quite a significant amount of movement 
uh, considering how much support this option gives. So I, I still call it a success and I'm really excited to see how he'll perform in it. So that's all I have for today. Uh, I just really wanted to show off this next structure because I think that it was actually a quite simple solution and it offers a lot of advantages and really just made it so much easier for my husband to wear and I'm, I'm excited. Uh, hope that you liked seeing it. Make sure that you're subscribed so you can see more. Make sure to check out my Twitch if you want to watch me and interact with me live while I'm building this. Um, I've been making progress simultaneously on a lot of different parts. So the, the muscle suit and the legs, like I'm all pretty far on those. Um, but they're coming along good and I'm excited. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Kazool, reminding you to embrace your inner beast.